All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today, we're just gonna do some air layering. Um, essentially, what we're doing is the sandwich bag method. Hopefully, you guys saw that particular video where we cut open the uh, sandwich bag. We fill it with soil. We Ziploc the top, cut it open, and then very simply, I'll just show you how this works. Take off some of the leaves here slip this over the branch get that in there nice and snug squeeze it around the uh, branch to get the air layer in position and then I'm going to take something here to tie it around the air layer so that it doesn't go anywhere we need to make sure that this air layer stays in place throughout the next two months which is the duration of the rooting process here so if this thing moves around and, and it forms roots and then it moves around well then the roots are going to break off and you're going to have just a terrible air layer so you're going to have a terrible time i mean probably at that point too your life is just in shambles but um you know that's why i'm here for you guys and air layering is just a very simple form of propagation where we wrap the branch with some wet soil and that branch eventually roots into that soil and then we can sever the branch at a lower point below the roots and have ourselves a whole new tree. Um, I like to use the sandwich bag method, which is um, actually a, a friend of mine and fellow YouTuber, Ben B in Seattle. He was the one at least to introduce this method to me. I really like it. Simply we just fill up this sandwich bag it's a quart size plastic bag that you guys can get at the store, pretty much anywhere. Uh, we fill that up with moistened soil, typically peat moss, cocoa core, um, something that's very dense and finely particled. Uh, I've tried compost blends in the past. They don't have as much success with this. Um, sand, I'm not sure will have as much success either. I think your best rooting uh, materials are gonna be peat and cocoa core. So that's what we have here. It's, uh, it's this bumper crop that I'm using from uh, coast of Maine. And a lot of it really just is sphagnum peat moss. Um, there's other stuff in here, but a lot of it is that peat moss. So we're, we're getting good success, actually. I put on some air layers about three weeks ago, and I'm already seeing really solid root development. This is probably the most common question I get is, Ross, when do I do this? when do I do my air layers? And well, we're doing the videos now in the middle of July. So clearly now is the time. Um, but really the critical thing you need to know is that we really need to see an average temperature of 78 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the best temperature to see uh, to do any sort of propagation. The metabolic rate of our figs is the highest at 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we're, when we're rooting, when we're grafting, when we're air layering, it doesn't matter. 78 degrees Fahrenheit is the perfect temperature. And that's the average of the, the hottest daytime temperature, the warmest daytime temperature, and the coldest nighttime temperature. So if it's 90 during the day and 60 at night, you take the average of that, and hopefully that puts you close to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So the closer we are, the better success we will see. The further away we are, the worse our success will be. However, at colder temperatures, root development can occur. It's just that the propagation, the root formation is a bit more difficult at those colder temperatures. So if you have a average of about 60 or 65, it's just a lot less likely that you'll start to see success. So for me here in the Philadelphia area, I've already done my first air layers about three weeks ago. Here's one down here on the Ruchilla de Elba, and you can see this is only three weeks of root development. I could pretty much take this off now if I wanted. Um, so it fills up the sandwich bag. That's the other nice part about the sandwich bag, by the way, is that you can see very clearly right through uh, they're affordable, they're cheap. Now, the other method I like to do is a kind of a stool air layering method where we simply just fill up a, a container 
any sort of nursery container that we have. This is a larger one over here that's probably a three gallon size. Um, we fill this up with soil. We cut down the side of the pot and into the bottom. And then we wrap that around the trunk of the tree and fill it in with soil. We pack this in really nicely. So there are different methods, really. Um, there's so many carriers for soil. That's really all this is, is well, which, you know, what carrier for soil do you want to use? I find that this particular method, the sandwich bag method, is just insanely quick. So for me, trying to do 40 air layers in an hour is doable because I'm doing, you know, a very fast method here. So let me show you guys. We'll look over here at this black Madeira tree first. And this is where we'll do some of our air layers. So there's a lot of shoots here coming from the base on this black Madeira KK. Um, I didn't thin this out, I thought, because it basically was killed to the base by the cold and we put out a lot of these suckers. There's almost no chance that this will be in the right hormonal balance to form fruit buds. Uh, it could get as much light as it probably, uh, maybe in a higher light environment with less of these branches, you will see uh, the ability for it to fruit after dieback. You know, I won't want to say it can't, but it's just unlikely. I knew from my experience, my chance, the chances to see um, some fruit this year were low. So I just let it grow. I didn't thin it out. You know, it is what it is. Next year, we'll just protect the tree. We'll bend over some of these limbs. Like this is the perfect limb right here. Is that what we're going to do right now is I'm going to break off the leaves where I'm going to air layer it. We're going to wrap this around as I showed you guys with my finger. Make sure that there's good contact here. We're getting the soil all the way around the branch. Let's see the mosquitoes are swarming right now. Um, so we got that nice and tight. I'm going to take my TE binding tube. And then we're just gonna tie this around. And that is all is required. So hopefully you guys can make this out. Just tying this around the other side. We want this nice and tight. As I said, we don't want this to move around all that much. Now, what's nice about putting the air layer on the end is that first off, this growth here is not lignified. It's very soft still. So we don't have to score the bark uh, every single time. Now, if I was gonna put the air layer down here in the center of the tree, where the branches, you can see they're starting to brown up, they're hardened, uh, it's definitely recommended to score the bark. But out here, I'm seeing pretty good success not doing that. The other nice positive is that this is quicker. I eliminate one step, but then also the air layer is now forced it's forcing the branch to, to lie itself down along the ground. So in the fall, when I'm gonna protect these trees, I have to bend one or two shoots from the base on every single tree. And I'm gonna bend those over and protect them, right? But this makes it ex extremely easy to protect these branches. Uh, this will be extremely well lignified because it has a lot of time to lignify like this. It pretty much will stop growing for the most part. Um, yeah, it'll put out some growth down here at the tip, but a lot of this will stop and lignify and I'll have a very well lignified branch that's already kind of along the ground doing its thing for the entire year. It makes bending these branches and selecting the branches I want to bend a lot easier. So that was one air layer done. 39 more to go. I'll just show you another one here. We're going to do the same exact thing the end of this branch. Typically, I want the branches to be about 18 inches in length. And then I will bend them over like so. So there's about a foot of growth that will then be plopped back up in the spring. And that growth 
will have a lot more easier time. So instead of black Madeira having no fruit on it this year, we will actually get fruits next season on this tree because I was able to protect it throughout the winter. Um, just by bending the branch over, covering it with mulch, and then probably throwing tarps over top. But that's it. And then I'll set the air layers actually to the side, like so, out of the way, so I'm not stepping on them. And that's it. So now we have, like, in a way, we have more light in the center of the tree as well. So this is kind of what I was doing three weeks ago, is I was evaluating these trees that really had a lot of growth from the base, a lot of these suckers that came up, and I made an executive decision and decided to bend over a lot of the branches to um, allow more light for some of these others. And now you can see like the Sandbagio, this tree here has fruit buds that appeared. So allowing the light to come into the trees, uh, I've actually been able to set fruit buds on these branches in the very difficult state that they're in. Even on the Smith tree here from dieback, there's a fruit forming right there, it looks like. So it's nice uh there's kind of multi-function that's what i was doing three months three weeks ago getting these air layers on to actually thin the branches believe it or not um as a way of thinning the branches and then um now of course it's mainly just about propagation um not necessarily so concerned with this black madeira getting light now at this point because it is the middle of july any fruits that we'll probably see uh forming in august just really won't ripen in time so it is what it is but um yeah guys that's air layering 101 uh let me just show you a couple more actually we have and this just takes time you know you need about two months for this process to occur here's um here's some root formation down there actually this is on golden rainbow i find every variety is different there's more uh, root formation down there on golden rainbow Let's see here, here's Nero 600M of Villa de Bordeaux. We got roots down there. Oh, that one looks pretty darn good. More, oh, that one looks really good. So a lot of these I can chop off and I, if I really wanted to, I could send them to somebody, get them stabilized. Here's actually one right here where the tip, I guess didn't like what I did to it. Is there roots? There isn't. So this isn't always 100% success, but Here's a pastillier air layer. Again, that one took. And let's look at this one. And that one took. They've actually grown quite a bit in the last three weeks. Look at look how much growth that is. But again, they were placed at the tips of the branches. There's another one. But yeah, thank you guys here for watching. This was uh, air layering using the sandwich bag method. It's really the quickest way I know how to do this. So We'll see you soon, all right? Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll catch you for the next video, guys. Take care.